Hello everybody, welcome back to Sophisti Cakes. For a change of pace this time, I thought I would show you how I made this realistic wafer paper anemone. If you know me at all, you know that sugar flowers have kind of been my thing for a while now. But with um, the gum paste flowers kind of taking a back seat to more realistic, natural types of flowers, I have started playing around with the wafer paper. So if this looks interesting to you, please stick around and we'll get to the details right after the intro. So the first thing you need to know are the tools that we're going to need. I have a template for the petals that I downloaded from, let me say, I'm going to say this wrong, Anna Astashkina. <laughs> and I have some gum paste and a ball tool, some floral wire, and some stamens. Now these stamens were originally white and I actually colored them black by using some black food coloring and some Everclear that I combined in this little container, shook it up to get it all distributed, and then I just put the stamens inside of that and let them sit for about five minutes, then I pulled them out. I also had my pliers, my torch, and my zero grade wafer paper. Now on this wafer paper, I'm gonna use the bumpy side and some floral tape. My floral wire got some color on it, so I needed to cover that up. And to activate your floral tape just stretch it and it will stick to itself and I just wrapped it right around here pulling and twisting as you put it on. Now I need to make a little hoop a little hook at the end of this to put our flower center on so I'm just using these small pliers wrapping it around tightly and just pinching it together a little bit you just need a little something for your gum paste to hold on to. I'm making the center with my gum paste. I'm just rolling it into a ball in my, in my palm. And then I'm holding it against the template to make sure that it's going to be the right size. I really should have held it up against the other one because that will be the center row of flowers, but that's okay, it worked out. Use your torch to really heat up that hook. And then insert it into your center. Yes, there's gonna be a little smoke, but that's okay. What that does is that melts the product, the gum paste, onto your wire. And I'm just kind of working my center into a little bit of a point on the bottom so that I can secure it more tightly to my wire. I just kind of get it worked around there and then I twist it. Just forming it back into the shape I want it in and use the ball tool because these centers have kind of an indentation in the middle. I wanna make sure you don't move it around too much because you could accidentally pull that wire out since it's not set up yet. We get that center indented, and then I'm using a Dresden tool. Actually, it's not a Dresden tool, but it's, it's a pokey tool. <laughs> I'm not sure what it's called. And I'm just putting all those little indents into the outside part of the center. I'm gonna put it in my, my foam cape dummy there that I use for prep, just to hold on to things while I'm putting things together and I'm using those stamens that I cut down to about mm, half an inch long in a circular pattern around the center because that's how the stamens on an anemone are. You don't have to make it perfect. I have a hard time not trying to line them up exactly. And there you go. And then I would set it back in your foam and leave it, I would leave it overnight so that it sets up firm. I did not do that and I, I wrestled with it for a little bit. I let it set for about five hours, but I would leave it overnight. Now you're gonna take your paper and put it over your template. You could eyeball this if you want to, but since Anna makes these templates for us to use, I wanted to take advantage of that. Now don't let the fact that you're drawing on this with a pencil worry you because a pencil is actually graphite and not lead. That is a misconception with pencils, at least now. You're not going to hurt yourself by ingesting that. And also, when you cut out your petals, you try to cut that part off anyways. Not to mention the fact that nobody's going to eat these flowers, so it's fine. So don't stress yourself out over it. So for this flower, I wanted to do five petals in two rows, which means I needed to have 10 petals of each size, of both sides, because we're going to double up these 
petals so that they're thicker. Because when we're shaping them, we want them to have a little bit more thickness, a little bit more st stability to them, a little bit more durable so that they don't, because wafer paper tends to want to disintegrate. And if it's doubled up, you have less chance of that happening. So I'm putting them into the plastic bag until I'm ready to use them because they can dry out pretty quick. Now just use that template that you already cut out and you can cut up to three petals at one time. Just line them up with your template on top and cut them out to the same size and shape. I decided to add a little of this watermelon petal dust to the petals because sometimes I have a little pinkish blush towards the center and I wanted to do that. So I added some of the petal dust to a little container and I'm spraying in some wafer paper conditioner. What wafer paper conditioner is, is it's equal parts boiled water that is then cooled and then you add the glycerin, food grade, grade glycerin, sorry that's a mouthful, to it and put it in the water bottle and shake it up real good. Now when you're done with it, you'd store it in the refrigerator and reshake every time you want to use it. So I'm actually gluing the petals together with piping gel. I'm going to do that first so that they stick together real good. Then I'm using the petal dust with the wafer paper conditioner and stippling that on towards the bottom. And I'm going to brush on some more of that that doesn't have color in it on the rest of it because we, we want to do is saturate this enough so that it will take some texture and some shape. So it has to be softened somewhat, but we don't want it sticky because wafer paper gets sticky when it gets wet. So that's what cornstarch that I dusted on there will help it from sticking too much, but sometimes you'll need to go in and add a little bit more of your conditioner and then some more cornstarch. Don't be shy with the cornstarch. <laughs> and then if, as long as it's not sticky, you can put it in your flower former and you can see I'm holding up the base part of that. I only wanted it to texturize the probably last two thirds of it because those floral wires will come right out if you mess with those too much. And then I put them in a flower former, AKA my deviled egg tray. <laughs> Use what you got, right people? So that it would dry with the shape. Now I left them for a few hours. They do dry fairly quickly, but you can leave them up to overnight. They're not going to dry hard. They will dry dry. And I added a little bit more petal dust of the pink or the watermelon because I wanted it to be a little bit more color. Now we're going to assemble. So you'll take your set up flower, flower center, start with your floral tape. You can start down a little bit from the top, wrap it around, then you can push it up towards the top. You'll see me do that right here, I think. Yep, I pushed it towards the top. And then give your wires a little bend on your petals. Now for the petals I used, what did I use? I used 24 to 26 gauge wires so that they can be bended a little bit. For the stem and the center I used 18 to 20 gauge, I believe. It's a little thicker so that it would hold a little bit more weight. Not that you really need to worry about that with wafer paper, but you do for gum paste. So that's what I had. So now you're going to start placing your petals about a half an inch, not half an inch, I'm sorry, about an eighth to a quarter of an inch down from your stamen. So that gives you some room to manipulate them. You'll place them one layered over the next, one layered over the next, one layered over the next. And just put, wrap them with the floral tape. If they move around a little bit, that's okay. Since you have that little, little margin of error in your distance from the stamen to the petals, you can move them around. You're not locked into them staying right there. Just kind of get them where you want them. And then once you've got those where you want them, move the floral tape down another about quarter to half, eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch down and start assembling your second row of flower or of petals. Just twisting it as you go.
and just wrap it all the way down to cover all those stems or all those wires that you don't want exposed. You don't want to poke wires into a cake that are exposed. So there you go guys. Gorgeous wafer paper anemone. I think these look super realistic and those leaves were actually done with the same technique. Just with a leaf cutter and a leaf impression mat. So if you like what you saw, please like and share and subscribe. Do all the things and we'll catch you next time. Thanks guys. Bye.